Learning to code can seem daunting. There are so many resources, too many resources, but you have to start your learning somewhere. And ideally, that's from a place that has no prerequisites and no assumptions about what you already know. You wanna be present and able to focus on what you are being taught in the moment with no uneasy sense that you've missed something important. You've had that feeling, right? You don't wanna stop your lesson to go search for other sources to fill the possible gap in your knowledge. Now, if you're thinking about learning Python, you're onto something. That's a wonderful idea. Python is a popular first language choice as it was originally designed from its very beginning to be easy to read. Now, you might assume the language is named after that terrifying snake, but in fact, it's named after the groundbreaking British comedy group, Monty Python. Yeah, Python has a long history of being fun and not taking itself too seriously. It's a general purpose scripting language, so you'll find it used in all sorts of fields and many different types of applications. The US government uses Python to do statistical analysis and data visualizations. Spotify, Evernote, and OkCupid rely on Python for personalized recommendations and other artificial intelligence-based tasks. Disney, Pixar, Lucasfilm, and others use Python to provide more realistic effects in their movies. Snapchat makes those silly filters by using Python for facial recognition. Large familiar websites like YouTube, Instagram, Reddit, and Pinterest, and even The Onion lean on Python. You can use Python for face and speech recognition. You can control robots and shoot lasers, send an email when your doorbell rings. You can do just about anything that you can imagine. Python has seen a lot of growth in this decade and its popularity is continuing to soar. This makes learning the language both exciting and lucrative. The Python community is supportive with a big focus on documentation and openness. There are tons of Python inspired conferences held internationally all year long. The Python Software Foundation is a nonprofit that has been formed to ensure that the language advances and the community grows in diverse ways. Community is a crucial part of embracing a language and you've found a great one. No matter what resource you choose to learn, without a doubt, you're going to be outputting the phrase, hello world, to your screen. It's guaranteed, it's like a rite of passage, a modern day tradition of all learners in all programming languages. And displaying information for your users is a fundamental part of any application that you're ever gonna build. Should we do it? Yeah, let's do it. On the Python Software Foundation website, there's actually an online interactive interpreter that allows you to write some code. So what you're seeing here is known as the interactive Python shell. The shell allows you to explore and test out various bits of code. The triple greater than sign here, it's letting us know that it's waiting for us to write some Python. So let's do it. Let's type out that instruction. So the instruction is print, and then we're gonna do an open parenthesis, and then I'm gonna open a quote, and we're gonna say, hello world, and I'm gonna close that quote, and then I'm also going to close that parenthesis. Now I wanna make sure that you type this line exactly as it's written. Python is case sensitive. So this, if I did a capital P here, this print is different than the lowercase p print. So that's it, that's our line. So we're gonna press enter and bam. Congratulations on completing your Python rite of passage. Our line can be read as call the function named print and pass it the string hello world. Let's break that description down a bit. Functions are a programming concept that allow you to group common instructions together under a given name. This encourages code reuse and helps to avoid writing the same things over and over. The function named print is one of the many standard functions provided by Python. You can and will very soon create your own functions. When you use a function, it is said to have been called. You call a function by placing opening and closing parentheses after the function name. Functions define what are known as parameters, which can be thought of as options that make the function behave differently. Now, the print function has been defined to accept a parameter. The value passed into the parameter, also known as an argument, will be the value that is outputted. Now, about that value. When we use those quotation marks, we created what is known as a string. A string is a series of characters, you know, like letters and numbers and symbols all combined. They are strung together, like letters on a birthday banner. The programs that you write in Python are called scripts. Think about these like a script for a play. You write instructions that you want the computer to perform. Python interprets the meaning and then performs or executes your script. You just wrote a single line script and it was wonderful.
There is a lot of terminology and concepts packed into that one-liner, right? Don't worry, it'll all sink in if you just immerse yourself. Getting started is definitely the biggest hurdle in learning, so you're off to a great start. Now the next hurdle that you're bound to hit is the challenge of staying motivated. It's important to be able to self-assess your new skills. You'll wanna feel that you're accomplishing your goals and making progress. It's important to try and make sure that you challenge yourself to ensure that the information you are taking in is sticking. There are coding exercises, sometimes called katas, that will keep you practicing after you've picked up your skills. You definitely want to make sure that you exercise your new coding muscles. After you complete some learning, oftentimes it's hard to know where to direct your focus next. Like I said, there's definitely not a shortage of places to learn. And as a self-learner, you probably already know how difficult it can be to find the right course at exactly the right level. Sometimes there's too much assumed about your skills, and sometimes they are way too slow in continually repeating concepts that you already comprehend. Now, the same problem exists for those practice challenges. Finding the right challenge or project to start for your current skill level can be difficult to locate. Don't worry, you'll find your place. Just keep looking. Okay, well, maybe you don't need to look too far. Now, pardon me for not introducing myself before, but I'm Craig, and I'm a teacher here at Treehouse. At Treehouse, we employ full-time teachers that create content that evolves from the very beginning to the more advanced concepts that you'll find. We know what you've seen, because we were there with you. Because of this, we're able to speak with you in terminology that we know you currently understand. We start from the very beginning. No assumptions about your knowledge and definitely no requirements. You don't even need to have anything installed on your computer. Our beginning content is all taught in our web-based environment, Workspaces, so you can get started coding immediately. We want your experience to be laser focused and fun. We care deeply about your learning journey. That's why we want to ensure that you start off strong and stick with it. We understand that learning to code can seem daunting, so we pay close attention to the feedback from our students. We make sure to apply their suggestions and ideas to our content as we refresh it. We're also huge fans of learning science around here, and that's why we're constantly experimenting and embedding the latest tools and findings in our content and our application. I realize that it might be obvious that me, a teacher here at Treehouse, would recommend our service. But look, even if I didn't work here, I still would recommend Treehouse. I wholeheartedly believe in what we're creating. I wish I had the solutions that we're providing when I was first learning to code. I think you're gonna love it. With us, you don't need to worry about what you should learn next. You just join a track and we'll guide you. Tracks are comprehensive. They're well-curated, ordered playlists of our content. When you complete a track, we'll give you options so you can decide what subject to learn next to better serve you and your goals. You just focus on what you're learning and we'll take care of the rest. Don't forget to go easy on yourself. View learning the code like learning a foreign language. Just like you wouldn't expect to be fluent after a couple of Spanish classes, you shouldn't expect to understand every line of code you see, just yet. Coding takes practice and you will make mistakes. It's part of the learning process. Don't let them get you down. Like most learning experiences, learning to code is not without its shares of ups and downs. There are some learning curves that you're bound to experience as you pick up a new language. You might expect it to be a straight shot, but usually that's pretty far from how it actually goes. Now, in order to make it up over those hills and valleys, you're gonna need some patience and thoughtful dedication. You want to create a learning habit. Squeeze learning into your busy life and make it work for you. Now we've created our courses with self-pacing in mind. Learn at your own pace and don't overdo it. With our new on-demand media lifestyles, one thing that we educators see time and time again is some students will attempt to binge learn just like they might consume a new season of one of their favorite shows. Now learning science says this binging isn't good. You need time to let some of those bigger ideas solidify themselves. Keep that learning habit healthy. Taking breaks allows the information to sink in. If you can find just one hour a day to focus specifically on learning, you'll surprise yourself with how much knowledge you'll be able to obtain and how natural it will start to feel. Now, one way of making that happen is to add learning to your calendar. I also highly recommend the community or really the movement called 100 Days of Code. What you do is you commit to code for one hour a day for 100 days and you share your status through social media. It's an inspiring and incredibly supportive community. I find that the movement keeps me motivated, learning and practicing every single day. Oh, speaking of practice, I forgot to mention, at Treehouse, we have code challenges. Code challenges are interactive prompts that help guide you through our courses. Nothing is better than that aha moment that solving a coding problem can produce, and we've peppered them throughout our content. The struggle of completing a challenge is actually an important part of learning. It's like muscle resistance training. 
No pain, no gain for your brain. We also have a wonderful Python community on Treehouse. We provide a very beginner-friendly and safe space to ask questions. Participating in the community is a great way to stay motivated and learning. You can help assist fellow students with problems that they're stuck on. And nothing helps to submit your learning more than trying to explain a concept in your own words. It's definitely a win-win situation. Your fellow student will gain some of your knowledge and understanding, and organizing your thoughts to assist them actually helps you retain and refine your own learning. Being able to help is a delightful feeling and a well-earned benchmark of your progress. If it's not clear, I'm super excited that you're considering learning to code. It will change the way that you look at things. It's literally life-changing. It'll open up a whole new world of opportunities for you. Hello world indeed.